Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Bloom the Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the third episode of the video podcast and our 22nd episode of our podcast in general. Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As you can see, we have a full studio today. We have a very special episode. We have Aaliyah and Brian, who drove all the way out here from Texas, Austin, Texas. Howdy. Um, Yeah, how you guys doing? Great. Tired. (laughs) Tired. Yeah, tell us about that drive, man. How was that? It was cool. You know, 21 hours of driving. It's not horrible. We only had to pee on the side of the road twice. That's not too bad. The rest were in a toilet. I thought you were going to say like in a water bottle or something. No. Just squatting in the desert. (laughs) At least got some good quads or something after that. You know, just keeping that squat. Um, (laughs) Great way to start. Anyway, um, we're so happy to have them on the show. And it's going to be a fun one. They always bring so much insight and wisdom to the table when it comes to talking about really anything in general, whether it's life, spiritual things, uh, really whatever it is. Um, but before we get into that, if you guys didn't check out our last episode, um, make sure you guys do that. We, t- Me and Ashley talked about modesty. Uh, the link will be in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. Um, for today, though, we wanted to talk about something that I feel like applies to everybody, especially given how you know, the state is of our country and just how the world is in general. Um, and that's relying on God and keeping our faith in him during trying times. And, you know, I'm sure we all have personal experiences where that's challenging and where it seems like kind of like all hope is lost or, you know, however we might feel at the time. And we kind of just want to talk about how to battle that and how that looks practically for us as believers and how we can you know, best keep our faith in him when everything seems uncertain. So I'd like to pass the floor over to you guys and see kind of the challenges that you guys have faced in your guys' own life, whether it's currently or in the past, when it comes to keeping the Lord at the forefront of your mind and really relying on him during, you know, difficult circumstances. I'll let you start, baby. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I think the balance for me is always whether I'm going to try and control a situation or okay. like the, like it's hard for me to just sit back and be like, God's in control. I'm always going to try and intervene and like make things work to my advantage. Right. That's probably where it's most difficult for me. Okay. It's I definitely trying to control that. situations. Yeah. It's definitely hard, especially because a lot of times you feel like you can. Yeah. There, it always feels like there's something more we could have done or something we shouldn't have done that would have changed the outcome of whatever situation that we're in mm-hmm. when really, you know, the Lord is orchestrating our life and we have to understand that sometimes pieces fall into play whether we want them to or not. And there's nothing we can do to change that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, it's hard to find the line between personal responsibility of doing things to prevent certain situations or to help yourself and then trust in God. Right. What about you, Brian? Uh, you know, yeah, that, that line's tough, tough to walk because personally I've struggled so much with finding answers of, of how to fix certain things, whatever I'm dealing with, yeah. um, and attack those things. And it, it's 99% of the time, it's not the word of God. And yeah. so it's, it's like, what can I do to help my situation? You know what? It's all about me. I, 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 right. Instead of looking at him yeah. and, uh, you know, it takes time to realize that for a lot of people, I think. Absolutely. But yeah, that's that's where I've struggled, but I agree 100%. What about you, Ashley? Yeah, I also think like a big thing, I think for all of us is we tend to look at every trial as like a really horrible thing yeah. instead of thinking of it as something from the Lord that's going to grow us. Like looking at it with the positivity and then like we're supposed to have joy while going through the trial, even though that's like really hard to do. <laughs> and most of us don't do that. But we're supposed mm. to because the trials ultimately for our good to bring us closer to him so we should be looking at it as a positive thing yeah i second that as well i I could know like i'm saying from personal experience i definitely feel what you both were saying about kind of feeling like you can control things and kind of like focusing on yourself like i always feel like man I, i i overstress myself overthinking about stuff that doesn't really matter in the long term Instead of, you know, kind of falling back and realizing that the Lord is the one that allowed this and it's here for a reason and kind of 
um, remembering those verses about how God is going to take us through the trial no matter what it is and that he won't give us something more that we can handle. And kind of trusting in those verses and trusting in those promises to get me through rather than kind of overthinking all what my next steps need to be and, you know, how to fix it. Because I'm always thinking about, like, how do I fix this rather than looking to the Lord for an answer. And that's where it's hard. I think God will give you more than you can handle, but he'll give you a way out and he'll give you the grace to get through it. Because if you think about all of the martyrs and people who were like eaten by lions and burned to death like yeah it's not no person can handle that in their own strength right they they get like a supernatural trust in the lord right so i think he will give you things you you can't handle but he'll give you supernatural but he'll show grace yeah (laughs) supernatural ability to get through those things right okay yeah that definitely makes sense it's kind of like realizing that it's not us doing it. It's the Lord. Yeah. It's not our strength. It's his grace and mm-hmm. mercy showing up to our situation and providing the, the you know, resolve and the resolution to that mm-hmm. problem rather than us being like, yeah, I got through that myself. We have to realize that's the Lord bringing us through that trial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would ask you guys, like, what are some uh, things that you guys kind of do to help focus your you know your focus on him when you know times are tough uh for me i would say just reading through different um books of the bible that emphasize god's sovereignty like job i would say is one of my favorite books um specifically chapters 38 through 42 where he puts job in his place and is like i did this 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 you're this big right (laughs) like you're teeny (laughs) i control like behemoth and i'm the one who put the stars in the sky and all of this stuff and he just basically checks job (laughs) and so reading stuff like that helps check you when you're feeling like you have some say in how things go and then even just uh books like ecclesiastes where it talks about how life is vanity and how you know everything we do here we're only here for like a short time anyways yeah like our little lives aren't that significant to begin with so just remember like putting our lives in perspective and then putting our place in terms of our control over anything in perspective and emphasizing god's control over everything and his eternal uh lifespan yeah i like that you brought up job too because job is a perfect example of like, there's nothing like Job did necessarily wrong or right to make his circumstance go the way it did. I mean, we get to see the background of what happened at the throne room in heaven where uh, Satan comes to him and he offers up Job. So it's not even like Job could go and be like, what did I do? What did I do? Like, it was the Lord allowing that mm-hmm. to happen. And yet, even still, Job, you know, even though he did get checked at the end by God where he has to kind of put him back in his place. But for the most part, Job was very... Like, he didn't curse God, you know, when everything yeah. happened to him. He was, you know, faithful, you know. And that's kind of how we need to be with our trials, kind of just focusing and stop, you know, kind of just looking at ourselves and how pitiful we are and look at it as, an, you know, the Lord allowing this to happen in our life. Mm-hmm. So that's a, you know, that Job is always a super encouraging book. But uh, what about you, Brian? Yeah, just, just looking up. Um, I, I think I take a, a different definition to when people say, hey, just keep your chin up. Um, I, I, I take it more as, you know, you, you're, you're looking down and you're not focusing on, on creation and things around you, especially today's age. You know, we're all inside. We're all cooped up. Just going outside and looking up, man. I mean, just seeing mountains and stars and birds. And I, that's, that's how I get the relief from a lot of big things in life is just I'm nothing. You know, I'm way smaller than I think I am. And to be in awe of what's around me and what's created around me. And, you know, I've, I've been in situations before where I had no other choice but to look up. And it was forced to. And I feel that it was by God um, putting me there to get my attention. And, uh, man, just, it's just when you're at that point where all you have left to do is to realize that you're not as big as you think you are. I'm not God. I'm not like God as far as, you know, I got no control over holding those stars in place you know so yeah i think that's major for for really tough times yeah that's always i mean creation is just such a 
huge reminder of the magnificence of God. And I mean, if he can build, if he can create this whole world, you know, all the human beings with our, the way our bodies are made, with the way the world is constructed, the way everything just works. Mm -hmm. There's no possible way that he can't, you know, figure out a, a resolve to whatever small problem we're having at the current time and not to like downplay our problems because you know as people we go through real problems i mean everybody everybody's life has their own struggles and their own issues but just remembering in the grand scheme of things like you were saying how small and insignificant we are right mm-hmm. and i think uh also a really cool thing that you can do when you're in that situation is just like really like fellowshipping and hanging out with other believers is yeah. super encouraging even if you're not even talking about what's going on like in your life just talking about god in general with them is encouraging because you just i feel like it just refreshes you on like how great he is when you talk to other people about him so yeah yeah oh testimonies no i'll just say people's testimony you know it's huge Mm -hmm. yeah and uh at church yeah they actually talked about this when we were on cast the word with andrew um i was talking about uh, a message that our pastor preached and he was talking about how The beauty of church and fellowship shows the sovereignty of God so much more than we're able to really realize on a daily basis. But when we look at our own lives, we only see God's providence in our own life. When we go to church and we see all the other believers and see how God is maneuvering them through their life, it's like we're all a piece of a puzzle, is the analogy he used, coming together to show God's grace in all of our lives all at once. You know, it's kind of a cool way to kind of think about it because it's so true. We only we get to see such a limited view of God just from our own perspective. So when you like you were saying, hearing testimonies, uh, talking to other believers, getting that encouragement from them, and seeing how the Lord brings them through their trials, it just makes it seem like that light at the end of the tunnel is right there. Yeah, and you always like think that you're like, oh, I'm like going through this alone, or like this is totally just a me thing. And then when you talk to other people, you don't even have to mention it, but all of a sudden they're like describing your life, and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, there's like 20 other people dealing with the same issue I am. Yeah. So I feel like that's a pretty like cool thing to realize. So you can like talk about it together. Yeah, because I mean, there's so many things that pull for our relief in the world, and that's one thing that I've struggled with as well. Like. You know, a couple years ago when I was really at at one of my lowest, you know, so many other things were pulling for my attention. Like I would find comfort in music or I would find comfort in movies or whatever it was to kind of just distract me instead of allowing the Lord to be that relief. The world just offers you all these pleasures and all these things that are supposed to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get tripped up with all those distractions And just almost sulk in whatever situation that we're in instead of working to, you know, improve our situation by praying and reading the word and fellowshipping with believers and doing all those things that we know we're supposed to do. And it was, you know, by the Lord's providence that he was able to bring me out of that and kind of get me around believers. And it was one of those things, too, where I knew where I was supposed to be and church was kind of that thing that kept me going because I knew I still wanted to be at church. I still had to be at church. And just hearing those messages and just, you know, getting that encouragement kind of brings you away from feeling like those things give you any pleasure. Because when hearing a message that convicts you and makes you look to the Lord versus hearing some song that you feel like the lyrics apply to your life, there's no comparison. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so much more of an uplifting feeling to be at church and hearing those things. Do you think it's the same effect if you can do those things over Zoom or, you know, live stream? (laughs) I do what I don't. I think... In worst case scenario, which I don't think that this current situation with the coronavirus is worst case scenario, I think you do what you have to do. And if you, you know, have to have a Zoom call with somebody, you do that. But I don't think anything replaces that feeling of being in the room with someone. Like, you know, having those one-on-one conversations, those face-to-face conversations where you can weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. It's so much harder to do that over zoom yeah i mean i'm curious to see what you guys would say about that but for i know for me personally i feel like the conversations i'm able to have in person are just so much more meaningful when you can just be really really be there yeah in person for that person you know mm. yeah i think we're called to gather you know in large groups in church yeah. we're also called to gather in small groups yeah um and i think having pandemics and things that to, to limit that is is obviously you know, we got to do what we got to do to stay healthy, but also 
you know, we're called to, to gather. And yeah. so I don't, although technology, you know, has its benefits, I don't think this is one of them. I don't think you can virtually gather um, and get the same feeling of love and same feeling of companionship. Right. Definitely. I would agree. And, you know, I think one thing that the pandemic did, pandemic did, um, is it kind of exposed the lack there for wanting fellowship for some people. And I know it did it for myself at first, too, because when it first started, I was more or less okay with, you know, having the Zoom calls and stuff. But, you know, we're called to do so much more than that. Like, even with all the rules that were set in place, there's no reason why we couldn't, you know, have people over to your house for a small gathering or meet somewhere outside to, you know, conversate with believers and do those things. Like, if you want to do something, there's ways to do it. So using uh, circumstances like a virus or something like that as an excuse to not fellowship, I feel like is wrong. Because we do so many other things that, you know, are not important. Well, so, the question is, too, how does not trusting God play into that? Like, right. if you're not trusting God, that he's completely sovereign over your health. And I'm not saying be stupid. Yeah. But at the same time, like, what? at what point does it become an issue of trust? Because anything you do involves risks. Right. Like, going to church involves risks. Um, going outside involves risks. Everything involves risks. So, are we willing to risk uh, whatever small percent chance of contracting a virus to go be with other believers and to go fellowship and to keep others accountable and what does that say about us if we decide we're never going to go back to church (laughs) right right because i feel like it's really easy for a lot of people to do that and i actually want to touch on that but before we do i do want to do our quick uh hit the mic there our quick little plug for Sparkling Ice. If you guys haven't already tagged them in all our comments and videos, make sure you do that. Um, their links will also be in the description as well, so make sure you check them out. We love these. They're great. I don't know. You guys have never had these, huh? No. Let me let me see. Try what, that. What's, what do we got here? That's black cherry. Black cherry. Naturally flavored. Zero what sugar. I, don't like, I it? like that. If you guys don't, I mean, hey, you guys, <laughs> be honest, man. If podcast. you like it, you like it. I think they're good. Ooh. That tastes like soda, man. It does, and it has zero sugar and all that. It's hold on, let me. Let me. <laughs> she took more than one sip. I'll Yo, just keep this. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. Cool. So make sure you guys go ahead and tag Sparkling Ice. Uh, we'll leave these here for y'all to look at. I can barely reach the table. Um, and let's get back into it. Um, so yeah, bringing it back to what you were saying about uh, not trusting the Lord and kind of staying home and kind of secluding yourself away. I think that has a lot of negative uh, repercussions because like you were saying, anything we do involves risk and anything we do involves relying on the Lord, especially when it comes to trying times. Mm -hmm. So to kind of take that away, I feel like is very dangerous. And, you know, I've seen, I know like when it first started, I definitely felt the effect of it. I don't know about you guys. I know I definitely did. I know a lot of people who haven't been to church in like six months. Yeah. And a lot of them probably won't even return. Yeah. At this point, because they've fallen out of the habit and they have no accountability. People don't even know they're not listening to the online sermon because how would they? Right. Yeah. I think a huge thing of like, for me, at least getting through trials and stuff is when I can like serve. So going to church and serving and stuff is what helps like get my mind off of like, you know, other things. It's like, great. Like now I can focus on God and like put my dedication into that. But with all this going on. There is none of that, so it really does feel like you're just like kind of trapped in your own space alone, you know. Like yeah, yeah we we all have with people worshiping God together or serving Him. You're just yeah. There. <laughs> we we all have gifts that you know we need to be using in the church, mm-hmm. and you can't do that over live stream or Zoom, right? I mean, yeah, we all have things we're supposed to bring to the body with us, mm-hmm. and, and that's, I think especially. Oh, go ahead. oh sorry. I was going to say, I think especially during times where people, everyone's scared right now, whether they're scared of catching coronavirus or whether they're scared of tyrannical government, whatever they're scared of, people are scared of something right now. Yeah. So it's like when people are scared, that's when they need church. 
Yeah. Be scared the most. Church. And that's why I like what you said about the accountability because there's no real way to get through tough times without that accountability. The Christian walk is not meant to be done alone. You know, you need to have believers that you can lean on and that they can lean on you for tough times. So that way, I mean, that's what the, that's the beauty of Christian fellowship. I could talk about sports or college or whatever the heck with anybody on the street. But I, what I can't do is tell them my problems and how I'm trying to rely on the Lord and really ask for their prayers mm. when I need them. You know, So we need to be able to meet, to be able to do that. It's so vital that that happens, especially during tough mm-hmm. times. Because like you said, we're all scared of something. You know, So it's, it's hard. And like you said, some people haven't even been to church in six months. I can't even imagine. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how, you know that affects so i'm hoping people start to come back because when do you come back yeah like how low does Easter? the percentage have to be before you say i'm gonna go back like does you do you have to have not a single case in that entire country right. like what are like what does it have to be before people are like it's time to go back because you take the lord out of it completely when you rely just strictly on hearsay or what people tell you from whatever's on the news or whatever's going on in, in your current circumstance mm-hmm. you take god out of it and I think, too, it's it has a lot to do with pastors not leading. Like, pastors need to be the ones to step up and encourage people to go to church yeah. and encourage them to trust God Yeah, because they're responsible for these people and it's going to be their fault if they've locked down their churches and people never come back yeah. because they allowed them to do that. They didn't shepherd them to come to church and they... If a pastor's making it seem like virtual church is the same, then that's on them when no one comes back because they just say, I can do virtual for the rest of my life. Yeah. And with the way technology is, I mean, it's just going to be even easier and easier to make it that way. And it's dangerous. It's- I can go remote and stay in church. Right. Just live in the Bahamas. And yeah. Stay a part of our church family. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> Because then you're almost doing, you're like making 10% of the body do 90% of the work for you while you sit at home and the 10 people that are on site are doing the preaching, the singing, the live streaming, the setup, all that. You're not involved. Like you were saying, you're not serving. You're not able to minister to other believers Mm -hmm. that might be in trying times themselves that need your help. Mm -hmm. I was saying we're also, when it comes to getting through trials, we're always looking at what we need from others. Mm -hmm. instead of looking at how we can be serving others as well like obviously sometimes you know you need ministering and sometimes you need to be doing the ministering so Mm -hmm. it's bringing that back and getting our minds focused on our brothers and sisters rather than just ourselves Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i don't know if you guys had anything else that you wanted to add on top of that as far as maybe personal experience or anything like that I mean, I, I've struggled, like I said earlier, yeah. uh, I've struggled with a lot of health issues in the past. Uh, I'm doing great now, which is, which is awesome. It's a blessing. But I, I was looking to the wrong things quite a bit, um, too much to what I'm able to do myself, which is what I said earlier. But yeah. um, So I just want to encourage people that, you know, the, the word of God is the answer. It always is the answer. And there's always something you can do for yourself. But I think um, trusting in the Lord first um, because you know we're we're spiritual beings. I mean, there's so much inside of us that need to be in alignment before our body's ready to help whatever the issue is, whatever you're going through. So for me, you know, I had a lot of gut issues and a lot of just random things going on. And you know, being spiritual, if you're always like, if you're not right with God, if you don't feel you know that calm, yeah. you know that little part, you know, your whole body could be out of whack, but you could have that spiritual calm no matter what. And that's why you see people suffering or people dying and then there's they're just like oh no i'm, I'm good because i i trust in god it's like how like how are you you know you we, we we've all heard those stories right like how yeah. are you so calm like how do you because they're right with god they're spiritually there right so i think that's always first um and then of course be smart and, and research you know and try and figure out what what's wrong but that but that always comes later on um i yeah. think you know number one is is trusting in, in, in the lord so and also obedience too like trust and obey <laughs> they yeah. kind of go together and yeah. that will help you with things like for instance um like here's a hypothetical example like if you're feeling crappy all the time because you're overweight right it's like 
the fix might be eating less, but if you're being obedient and not being a glutton, then that will automatically fix the fact that you're overweight, right? Right. So it's like you're trusting in God and then you're obeying his word and that automatically fixes whatever it is you're struggling with it, whether it's anxiety or depression or whatever. Because if you're obeying him, your likeliness of struggling with those things are going to go way down anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It's like trusting God to give you strength to obey what you need to do, basically. (laughs) To get the results you want. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. I like that. And I think it's also being honest with yourself as well because I think the the easiest thing to do is to blame others or blame uh, you know outside circumstances for why you're not obeying and why you're not trusting and why you're doing all these other things instead of being like, "Okay, you know, I'm trusting on the Lord for this and I'm going to obey because that's what I'm called to do instead of saying, oh, well, she did this or he did this or the circumstances around me were like this. You know, it's always more on us to focus on the Lord and to do what we're supposed to do rather than letting the outside circumstances dictate how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, jumping on the podcast. It was a pleasure having you guys on here. You guys always bring... uh, the wisdom to the table so we appreciate it and i'm sure the people at home and listening appreciate it as well if you guys enjoyed this episode don't forget to leave a like and a comment and also subscribe check out our previous episode and our instagram the bloom the podcast Inscru- instagram can't even speak now uh <laughs> at the link below and we will see you guys on the next episode <laughs>